Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. Hi, it's Roy. It's, it's Val. Val. We're at Delphi. <laughs> we're here to um, talk today, uh, today about grouting, right? Is that what we said we That's were going to do? That's what we said we were going to do. Nice. So, so it's nice that we have something that we're going to grout. <laughs> we're going to grout. Works out better yeah, that way. Yeah, it works way. out really well. So you'll see uh, here in a minute, though, that maybe we probably could have spent a few more minutes gluing a few more pieces on. But uh, we got a little busy this week and didn't get a chance to uh, necessarily get as far on the mosaic as we want to. But, you know, the, it's uh, sort of interesting. I, tell, I teach a few of the mosaic classes here, and I tell people all the time that I know for me, I often don't mosaic the entire thing at one shot because... A lot of times I just don't have the time to do that. So I often do it in, in pieces or in, in sections. So that'll be a good thing I think to talk about. We can we can talk about the pros and cons of doing that. But but we have this nice little tray here that you can buy the tray at Delphi. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's kind of cute. It's, it's not, I think it's, it's really, right, it's real nice. Yeah. It's not overly expensive. It gives you this nice... Um, flat surface here a nice big uh, area to do some right. mosaic and it's not on, too right? heavy so once no. you, so if you add your glass then it's still manageable so yes. whether you're gonna yeah, just yeah. use it decoratively or you know functionally or functionally yeah yeah we'll have to talk about that too right yeah so, we got a lot to talk about oh, we got a lot to talk going. about um so if you're looking at the, the this fun merry christmas design uh this was done the words merry and christmas uh were cut out as was this tree with a, a water jet cutting system called a Wazer, which is a, a, a new toy we got here at, at Delphi just a, a little while ago. So we've been playing around with it and having some fun. So we, we cut this out. We thought it'd be a nice way to uh, do some grouting, but using the, the Wazer. Um, which I'm is, sure people thought you did that by yeah, hand. They probably did think I did that by hand. But mm -hmm. I should have just pretended I did. Right. Uh -huh. Everyone um, would have believed it. But I think soon, if you're interested into the into the Wazer, we're going to be selling it probably up on our website. I'm not sure exactly when. Kaylee probably knows more than I do. Only in the next few weeks. Next few weeks. So you look for that. But that's how we did all this fancy cutting uh, on here. Uh, we, as you can probably see, not, not everything's glued down. The um, snowflake, if you see a little snowflake that's here... And the holly leaves and berries are actually pre-cuts that, that Delphi sells. So they're, I think, um, probably like a fusible glass, right? That, of course, right. we're not using it for fusing, but right. using it for mosaics. Uh, but it's kind of fun because you can get some shapes that you couldn't cut out by hand. That's well, the fun True, thing about all yes. that water jet cutting stuff. So I, I glued some of the background up here a little bit. So you see some of these white pieces back here. And um, Daisy that works here, maybe I've mentioned her a few times, mm -hmm. the assistant manager here at Delphi. Uh, had, she did a bunch of this for me, so I always appreciate what uh, all what of she, her help. Yes. yes. I'm gonna, I told her I was going to drag her on camera someday. She doesn't want to be on the mm -hmm. camera, but neither do we, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, they see how that works out so, for us. Yeah, that's right. So um, I probably should, what do you want to do? Just jump right into it, right? Is that what you said? Yes. Um, okay. Well, yeah. Why don't, Great. You wanna, do you want to just do it, or do you want to talk about like sanded versus unsanded. Yeah, let's just do it because okay. I think one of the issues that we have with, especially when we, we decided to do a, a demonstration like this, is that the grout has to have dry for a certain amount of time, and we'll we'll get into that in a little bit. And so, um, yeah, so we, we think if we just get some grout down early, and then that'll give it a chance to dry. So hopefully by the end of the our little presentation here, we can clean it up. Uh, I can tell you that the you know uh, the drying time is really critical to uh, when you can clean it or how easily it is to clean. So, um, right. But hopefully we can, we can show you some of that. We'll, we'll try to demonstrate that. So I'm just going to mix them up real quick, but, um, I got, uh, this is a nice little product that we saw here at Delphi. Um, Jennifer's mosaics. This one is, is white. I went with white. Did you? Oh, yes. okay. After our discussion. Yes. You after we, to go we, against we, what we, we discussed. We talked about, Grout color. So at Delphi, we sell three different colors, um, black, white, and gray. And you're going to see the white and the black today, which are pretty, pretty exciting. <laughs> that <laughs> so, is exciting. Um, I can't wait. And we were debating the color, and uh, we got overruled. So, But there are, there are colorants you can tint it with. Yeah, there is. So that you can really, you know, if you buy white, you can tint it with the colorants and then make it any color you really want to. But... Yeah, it's um, yeah. Well, we were going to talk about colorants. Do you want to do that now or skip? Uh, no, but you were talking about the color of the grout, so yeah, I was oh, yeah. just so adding was a, a little one, bit right, of information. Right. About so um, I got this. So what's nice about this comes in a bag, right? So you can keep it. You want to, you know, when you're not using it or what you don't use, you want to keep it closed up, airtight, right? So moisture can't get to the grout. Uh, and then it comes with a nice little mixing thing. I'm going to not mix in there only because 
this is how we store them in our classroom is we just kind of leave them inside the, the bucket. They kind of hold up better. So I got a little plastic container I'm going to use here to mix up some grout. I usually use some kind of a spatula. So this is something else that we have here at uh, so Delphi, this really nice mosaic adhesive and grout applicator set. So there's, a, well, I'll, I'll talk about some of the stuff later, but there's, you know, these kind of, um, like, they look like spatulas, but they're more like um, putty knives or something, right? And then some sponges, Wait, some little ones? tools. These little red ones, they're a little, they're a little firm, right? But they're oh. not bad. They're, they're pretty so nice. Do you for, want to open it? Yeah, I do. I thought it was open. Sorry. Oh. I, <laughs> I thought it was already open. I was like, mm, I can't get that open. But a lot of times I just use um, spatulas like uh, you get, you know, for doing in the kitchen area, I guess, is probably where these things are used. And I buy them like at the, at the dollar store, so not something Delphi sells. So sorry about that. But I'm going to grab a little bit of this. And oh, see, um, I just nice. forgot something that I wanted to grab. Um, a spray bottle. Do we, yeah, oh. I know. I just saw them the other day. I'll do you get have one? But these are nice. <clears throat> See, look now you can see them better. Oh yeah. And then the like popsicle sticks are those to stir with. Yeah. So you know, it, it just, some of them they use for stirring. Some sometimes you use for actually trying to scrape a little bit of grout out of an area. You know, a lot of times when we're working with glass, not all the glass is the same thickness. So because of that kind of uneven thickness, you can you know bury some stuff in the in the grout. And and sometimes you might want to scrape that back out. It's easier to do it during the application than it is later when you're trying to clean the grout off. It's a whole lot easier to do it early on. But And then some of these are for applying adhesives, which are sort of nice. Um, this one has these little um, serrated teeth on the end of it, so you can apply adhesive, almost like doing tile work if you've ever done that kind of before. Sponge, we all know uh, what that is. And well, well, I'll show you a little bit later what we're going to use that for. So um, I'm just grabbing a small amount, because as you guys know, I don't, I'm, I'm not grouting very, uh, a very large area. Uh, so. The recommendation, let me, uh, tell, let's talk safety then real quick here while I'm doing this. Um, recommendation when you're working with grouts is you wear gloves. Uh, I do, I have a pair of gloves right here <laughs> in case I need them. Um, and then you would wear a mask of some sort, right? So uh, something along this line. And I can tell you guys that, you know, I, um, not wearing a mask at the moment while I'm mixing only because I'm mixing such a small amount. If I was mixing the whole bag, I would definitely, you know, it will, that'll generate some dust, but this is such a small amount. I'm going to add a tiny bit of water to it. It's really not going to uh, create a whole lot of dust. So that's the concern anyways, when you're working with drought, uh, grouts is when they're dry and you're working with the powder. If the powder becomes airborne, you know, that's something that uh, you probably don't want to breathe in. Right. Um, the other thing about grout is when you add water to grout, it's a chemical reaction that occurs. And that reaction is relatively mild, but it can be hard on your hands. And so that's why they recommend wearing gloves. I'm not wearing any gloves because I, I never get the grout on my hands. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure what people are doing when they get it on their hands. So um, I know some people really grout just, with their it's hands. It's just kind of drying, right? It's, yeah, it's drying. It's not yeah. like it won't it, burn you or anything no, interesting like that. But no. it can dry your hands out. Yeah. Well, I always tell people, I think probably the bigger issue is that the... Um, the dyes that are in the grout are pretty strong, so I mean you'll just stain your hands black, right? Oh, if yeah. you're using in you know whatever, and it'll take a while to kind of wear that out. So I am guessing, as you can see, uh, I always guess on how much water it takes. And uh, if you can watch this, you can see I'm using way too much water. I did that on purpose because I wanted to show you guys how easy it is to just you know get the right mix by coming back and grabbing a little more dry powder. Uh, so I'm just going to reach in there, grab a little bit more. So what is the consistency you're kind of trying to achieve? Yeah. So, yeah, I tell people that what we're looking for is something spreadable, right? So think of um, cake frosting, um, creamy peanut butter, uh, that type of thing. Uh, and I usually okay. say like the like the, the natural, you know, creamy peanut yeah. butter. The one's got the little oil on top and you got to mix it in. So it's, it's, a, sense, thicker. it's, it's, it's a little, thicker. actually I think it's a little thinner or a, oh, little, a little more malleable. But I actually have a couple of little tricks that I'm going to show you here in a second. So if you're a recipe kind of a person, on this package tells you how much, there's two pounds in here and it tells you how to mix up two pounds, uh, which is nice. But if you only want to mix up a small amount like I do, uh, you could do the math and try to figure out how much water that is. But um, really, I just do it visually based on what, what, it, uh, what I'm looking for. So we're <laughs> We're not the math people. <laughs> They're somewhere else. Um, so you can see that I'm still not, not, this is way too thin, right? So what I'm looking for, again, is something spreadable. Um, I have a couple of little tricks or tips that I use when I'm trying to figure out how much it is. Um, I just added way too much water. So 
my advice to people always is it doesn't take anywhere near as much water as you think it does, right? So you should always start with the powder, then add the water slowly. Uh, I didn't add the water slowly. I just kind of dumped some in there and you can see where we're at. If you really want a recipe, it is about, uh, it's a little less than two ounces of water per pound of grout. So again, if you're measuring and weighing, and I can tell you that a cup of grout is about a pound. It's pretty close. So again, visually, if you're trying to get close to where you're at. Yeah, I'm not really doing a very good job of mixing this. Are you nervous? Is that why? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> is that it? I'm not used to being, not, not <laughs> used to with people mixing watching. grout with, with five people watching me. So um, it makes me a little nervous. No, that's, it's not that's looking better. I, I right? do this in class every time I'm demonstrating it. I never get it right. And I always think, wow, that guy should know what he's doing. But well, the he, other kind of, well, then doesn't. the other little tip about this too is, is that especially if you're going to mix the whole container when you don't oh, have gosh, extra, yeah, yeah. then you really want to back off on the water oh. because now you don't have any extra to, to uh, you know, that's fix a, it. That's a great point. Because one of the things, again, Ask if you're not. me how I know. <laughs> from personal experience, <laughs> yes. right? Mm -hmm. So one of the things is that, um, I, I mentioned earlier, this is a chemical reaction. So as soon as we add the water, we've started the reaction. And then, so what that essentially does is it sort of starts the clock, right? So we only have a certain amount of time to work with it before it gets too stiff and you can't work with it. But it also uh, starts the clock and we only have a certain amount of time to clean it up. Uh, otherwise it becomes really quite, quite the challenge. So this is um, not bad. So it's not horrible. Can you see it? So the rule for me is this. So if it sticks to the mixing tool, then that's pretty good, right? Um, if you shake it a couple times and it pops off, that's probably the perfect mix. If it's too wet, it'll pop. You probably can't get it to really even really stick. And too, if it's too dry, it won't stick either. So um, it'll just kind of crumble off as it comes. The other little trick is this sort of a thing. If you can see this, like when I mix it and I pull it out, you can see where I did all the swirls with the tool. That also tells you that's probably the right mix. Again, if it was too wet, all that would just ooze back down. Mm -hmm. And most people work with grout too wet because it's easier to work with. Um, and uh, they have more working time because it's wetter. But uh, really, I, was something that Val and I were talking about earlier was, you know, um, yeah, how durable do you want to make it, right? I mean, if you're making this serving tray and you're going to use it and you're going to, you know, clean it and wash it and do all those things to it, you want to really make sure that the, the grout is um, durable and as strong as you can make it and that has to do with the amount of water so again as i mentioned a few times it's a chemical reaction and if you add too much water you weaken the grout if you don't add enough water you weaken the grout right so it's trying to get it just right that, that's always the challenge so again what's nice about these little spatulas is i can mix with it and then i can use it to apply now um i asked val to grab the, this because a, a spray bottle is a great way if you made it a little too dry and then you have to add just a tiny bit of water. I mean, trying to pour in a, a little drop of water sometimes is a challenge. So, so sometimes these are just to spray, you know, just a little bit of water in there you know, just to get you to right where the mix is at. To me, this is slightly on the dry side, I would say, but that's okay. I mean, we're in a hurry and uh, we got stuff to do. We all have stuff to do, don't we? So, oh, I so forgot what, to do the, um, what I you forgot to do the taping. I didn't tape it. What part are we going to... I'm just doing up this little corner. Up this here. Uh, Down to the tree? Yeah, I thought I'd try to get down to the tree. I tried to purposely try to do that. I thought it might be fun to grout a little bit in there, but I guess we'll have to find out. So, oh, That was probably the smartest <laughs> thing. Whoops. That was probably the smartest thing I ever did. As you can tell... Some of them uh, aren't glued down. 99% of the pieces aren't glued, aren't glued down. That was a good one. Well, but we laid them out there because... Yeah, I did that what, purpose, we, so. what you also were going to talk about is that you're not going to have a lot of open space where you're going to have big areas of just grout. Oh, yeah, yeah, You yeah, want the background not. to be fairly, yep. and that has to do with strength and what you're doing with it as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and good that, point. You're going to talk about that, right, when you talk about sanded versus unsanded. Yeah, we'll talk about that okay. when we get to, to grout. So, I just, like I said, See, let's... See, we keep giving these teasers, so yeah, you can't just, go away that's because... Right. So, Right? You have to stick around, right? I know, because, because All the real is, good information is coming. We're keeping all the tricks. We've been holding back. So, I... Just painter's tape, right, is what, what the blue tape is. I think we're probably all familiar with that. Mainly, I'm just trying to keep the wood from getting um, dyed, right? You'll stain it if you get any grout on it. Even the white will stain it. So um, so I'm going to come in. I'm going to just kind of force that in. Again, one of the nice things about the spatula is... Um, Maybe you could turn it at an angle a little the other way. 
So, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Like that, and then oh, of, so that Kayla can oh. kind of see behind the spatula. Because it's it's you're welcome. It's all about Kayla. That's right. The people they want to see. So you can see I'm just kind of so I'm doing two things here, right? One is forcing the grout in. And then the second is wiping off excess grout. So we don't want big globs of grout, you know. Um, laying on top of yeah, the glass. Yeah, laying on top of the glass. And I think, uh, as I was saying earlier, maybe I think some people um, do this by hand, which I don't because, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys know this, but the glass is a little sharp. <laughs> so um, I try to avoid it if I can. In well, there, sometimes it's not, it's, it's not grout? level, too, so you don't want to. That wanna... could be grout, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, this is going to be good. Try yeah. to do that circle right, right there. Below, yeah, below where your spatula is. That one? Right there. Oh, this one. I just thought that would be give us a little bit of a swirl to look at. Nice. And I'm not really worried. You know, I don't worry about, like, I just dropped a piece of grout there. That, that's going to be fine. That'll be super easy to clean up. So I don't really worry about that too much. All right, I'm not going to do all this. Obviously, let's get a little bit around the snowflake, I think, on this side of it. Maybe. And but that's, you, that's but you're really, your technique isn't just dumping a whole big glob out there. I and, don't, right? Yeah. yeah, you know, it's just surprising that sometimes for people uh, that, that well, like I said, I teach classes here, and they're always like, wow, you just, you know, I used a small amount of grout, and I pushed it a long ways, right? right. I mean, Part of that, too, is uh, it just makes it easier to clean up, right? As I mentioned a few times, the, the uh, less amount of glass, or I'm sorry, grout up on the surface, the easier it is just to clean off. So once I kind of got this, I'm sorry, I'm just fixating over a little spot here that's bugging me, is uh, once I get it kind of where I want it, I'll come back with a tool, and I'm just kind of scraping lightly off the surface just to keep it flush because, as I mentioned before, um, Excess grout on the surface is just something I'm going to have to clean off, and uh, it's just going to take longer to dry, right, if there's big globs of grout on the surface. And you guys all know we don't have time for that, so um, we're just going to... Um, sorry, I'm having a hard time getting rid of that one spot. Okay, that's it. Now I'm not touching it anymore. Now, uh, real important, uh, what's in here is going to set up, right? I mean, it's going to turn into a rock. You can't just wrap this with saran wrap or something and say, well, let's save this grout for later. It's going to um, harden. The other thing you shouldn't do is clean this in your sink. You're right. We were, Correct. We were talking about that. I think uh, in our classroom, probably have had the plumbers here a few times to clean out the drain, you know, <laughs> the trap in the, in the drain because of somebody was rinsing the grout down. So uh, don't, usually what I do is I let this, you know, wait around about a half hour, let it stiffen up, and then just scrape it out and throw it in the trash. It's, it's, if you try to clean it out, it's still wet, and it's kind of smeary, and it gets kind of messy. So let it dry a little bit. It'll stiffen up. You'll be able to clean it right out. Same thing with the tools, right? Don't rinse that into the sink. I'm just going to move that out of the way because we don't need it right now. And then now we're just going to stand around and watch this dry. That's what I thought we could do. Can you blow that on could it? Be, or no, nothing no. Like no, actually, that's a good question, though. So you shouldn't do anything to speed up the drying time. I've talked to people before that have done it, and they'll they'll like or they'll a take a yeah they'll take like a hair dryer. They're like, which will dry it. I mean, that will definitely speed it up. But what you're doing there is um, driving the water out of the grout, which I've you know I've said now like 17 times. That you know, it's a chemical reaction. So if it if you lose water from that chemical reaction, you're just weakening the grout. Um, where we had talked about a little bit was you know again, it's all about functionality, right? I mean, if you're doing something that's going to hang on the wall, I mean, whatever, right? I mean, if you're in a hurry, dry it. You I mean so so what happens yeah, to the grout? Not, I mean, yeah, this, yeah, how much you know stress is going to be on the grout? So hang on the wall or yeah, yeah, right. But so but now if you clean it, then if you, yes. you need it and not. Do that. Yeah, don't do that. Stop. I'm not sure what you're saying. Okay, so now we're going to let this dry, but then we're going to talk about now. We'll, now let's talk about the grout a little bit more. And again, if you guys have questions, I mean, feel free to reach out to us. Um, you know, Fal and I will, we know the answers. So, <laughs> so we can tell you, you know, you can make a comment in the video section below, or you can always send us a message on Facebook or Instagram. Um, or yes. you can email us at, uh, you know, Facebook at delphiglass.com so yeah, and then we'll answer them i mean right we i think we've been we're usually totally. pretty good yeah, at it so awesome. and even years later we'll answer them I, yeah, years later right and if you um you know do a comment now we'll probably even add, we'll ask answer that one right away yeah we will live 
Yeah, well, well live that's exciting. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, if that's motivating. It is. It is for. It would it be for me. You. That's okay. right. So, um, so we're there's two different types of grout. Uh, Val mentioned, I think, a little bit earlier, if you heard her. So there are sanded grouts and unsanded grout, and um, so we often get asked, well, what's the difference between them, right? right. So, and I always say, well, one, one has sand <laughs> sand in it, and the other one doesn't. Oh gosh. So that I know that was a bad yeah, joke. Sorry, I couldn't resist. So, um, so but why sand, right? Why does why does yeah, I guess it's probably a better why question. Do you use why do you one? Over the other. Over the other one yeah. is what we need to know. Yeah, so so um, grout is similar to concrete. You know, it's um, s similar. I just knocked something over. Oh. Uh, it's similar to concrete, and it has an, uh, something called Portland cement in it. That's the uh, binder of everything. That's what really what sets up and, and turns hard like, you know, concrete does, uh, right? And so the same thing happens with grout. And so what happens, though, is because of the Portland cement, it shrinks ever so slightly. The grout does when it dries. And the sand takes up space. It's the same reason why they put rocks in concrete, right? That's what the, the stones or the aggregate that's in concrete does. Uh, it takes up space. So when the, when the Portland cement wants to shrink, it can't shrink that much and it doesn't crack, right? We're trying to minimize cracking. So sanded grouts, the recommendation, I can tell you what the recommendation is for tile work, is that if you're doing a sixteenth of an inch or, or wider, uh, you would use a sanded grout. Um, so, Meaning the space. Yeah, the, the, the two space, yeah, the, the gap between your pieces. If yes. it's sixteenth of an inch or wider, you would use a sanded grout. If it's narrower than that, then you use an unsanded grout. So, I, you know, we were talking earlier in that, that, like the sanded grouts, I mean, even those, they recommend not going wider than half an inch or else you run the risk of the grout cracking as it dries. And then again, as you guys have already heard me say, I mean, if you didn't mix the grout correctly, you could probably get a crack. I mean, there's, there's a, a, a variety of factors. If you try to speed up the drying time, I mean, that could cause some issues. Um, so, but I can tell you for me personally, I use sanded grouts okay. probably 99% of the time when I'm doing mosaics. And the main reason why is because, you know, we have really irregular grout lines. I mean, normally when you're doing mosaics, right? I mean, you'll have some that are really, really um, skinny. Mm -hmm. You'll have some places maybe where the glass is even touching, but then you'll have these other areas that are much wider. And because of that, you could see that if you're using an unsanded, you could run into some issues with grout cracking as, as it dried. Now, now the other reason that, that they recommend using unsanded grouts is if you're working with materials that might scratch. So, um, you know, I, I don't necessarily put glass in that category, but... I, I've heard, I talked to somebody one time, I know a customer one time had an issue with an, an iridized glass. They were using a glass that had an iridized coating on it and they scratched it with a grout. But um, after talking to them, it, it was a cleanup issue, really. They just waited too long to clean it and the grout was so tough that when they were you know, trying to clean it off, they were, you know, had to use a little bit of elbow grease and they ended up scratching some of the iridized coating. So again, if you do it like I'm going to you know, sh show you today or we're going to talk about today, uh, even with iridized glass, you should be fine with the um, with the sanded grout. So, Sharon's got a question for you. Guys. Yes. Can you add black acrylic paint to sanded grout to make it gray? It's well, really funny wait, because uh, I just asked this question yeah. um, a couple days ago when we were starting to discuss what we were going to do because I'm not the mosaic person. He is, and so, and I do remember at one time people said if you're just going to want to you know tint it a little bit you could just use your acrylic paint if you have it so now i will turn this over to him because <laughs> yeah we he, talked about this yeah right? we did talk about it yeah i told her not to, i told her not to do it personally but so it depends i mean it's a great question uh, thank, thanks for asking and i know people do it all the time and it sounds like it's a, a great fix it what it has to do with is when you start adding something to the grout that is not grout right so paint and you know people use acrylic or latex paints um you're starting to change the composition of the grout and so there's a risk that you are weakening it by doing that now if you're just adding a tiny bit of paint and just want to tint it i you know to be honest i'm sure that probably isn't really going to affect it all that much it, it also is the um something we talked about just a few minutes ago was yeah, decorative or not yeah is it decorative or not is it functional you know if you're doing something that with like a tabletop and you're going to clean it every day and people are going to use it then you know, I, I probably wouldn't, but uh, if it's something that's going to hang on a wall or something like this that's decorative and no one's ever going to touch it, then, I mean, why not, right? I, I would just, I wouldn't use a bunch, you know, obviously. Um, there are uh, colorants or dyes out there for this purpose. We Delphi currently doesn't sell any, but if you're looking for um, colorants for concrete, for example, I mean, you could probably go to the, 
you know, the, your local big box home improvement store and they have, you know, a variety of colorants for uh, coloring concrete and it works. The difference with those is that they're just a pigment. They're a pure pigment with no real additive to them. So they're not doing anything to weaken the, you know, the strength of the grout or the concrete. Um, you can use, there are um, also products that are just for grout. I mean, there's grout dyes or grout stains that are you know, specific for that. And the same thing. They and the same thing, yeah. They won't yep. hurt the integrity. Yep, they're not the... going to hurt the integrity of the grout. So I get it. There's sometimes it's, um, uh, you know, you're looking for a particular color, or for example, and sometimes, you know, again, at the, you can't always find every color uh, that you might find, that, like in right. paint anyways, that you can find in there. So, But thanks for asking. Hopefully that helped. Um, so, oh, let's talk about drying time real quick. So the question I get asked a lot of times is, so how do you know when this is ready to clean up, right? I mean, part of it's just a time. We're just, you know, I'm kind of keeping a, an eye on the clock. But the other part is we're looking at the surface of the gla or the of the mosaic here. And you can probably, I think it shows up, it kind of has a dull sheen to it at the moment, right? Because it's drying. When it was wet, it was kind of shiny looking. But here it's getting duller. And it will get even more dull. Uh, it's going to turn into a... Is that, I don't know if that's a way of... Yeah, that was... Dull. Mm -hmm. um, but it will turn matte. You know, the, the surface will really start to turn a matte finish. And that will really give you a good idea if it's ready to clean up. I, and typically, it's about maybe 20 minutes to a half an hour is when we want to really look at cleaning them. Which I don't... You know, we were hoping not to spend... I know some of you are thinking the same thing. Wow, I hope, I hope he's not going to talk for 20 or 30 minutes, right? So we're going to probably clean this up a little sooner than we should, but we'll talk about the drawbacks of that and, and you know, the, what's the reason why you might not want to do that. But, um, again, we'll probably get away with it because uh, this is not going to be a, a functioning real tray. It's, just, it's more decorative, right? So, um, but as we get closer to that, we will let you know. So we did sanded and unsanded, right? Yep. We talked about that. We talked about colorants, drying times. Mm -hmm. and then so, yeah, let, let me jump back on drying time okay. real quick because there's a back end to the drying time, right? So I mentioned earlier that, you know, we've started a clock, mm -hmm. so to speak. Yes. And so we only have so much time uh, before we can clean it off. And for me, I think the back end of that is about an hour and a half, maybe two hours, you know, just depending on, you know, it's, it's hard to say an exact time because, you know, everyone mixes them a little bit different. I can tell you from personal experience that different brands act a little different as far as drying times go. I've noticed different colors do. Uh, so whatever the colorant is, maybe some require more water, and so because of that, they dry a little faster or whatever, right? Um, the condition of the room you're in, uh, you could see all these things could really be a factor yeah, about humidity, drying times. I mean, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot. So, so that's why I like to talk about visually what to look for because I think that's a better indicator than just going – Oh, it's been 35 minutes and I need to clean my grout off, right? So, but the back end is, I, I would say somewhere around an hour and a half to maybe two at the most. Meaning, uh, meaning you shouldn't wait yeah, any longer exactly. than that. That's like the longest you should wait. If you wait longer, it, it's just a more of a, I mean, you can clean the grout off. I, you know, you can definitely clean the grout off if you wait more than two hours, but it's going to be a, a greater challenge to clean it off. Right. Um, so, and, you know, we're trying to make it easy, right? So let's... Um, but he's got a question which oh, I think leads great. into our next topic. Oh, she nice. asks, is there a sealant that you can spray on your mosaic after to protect the grout? Vicky, what a great question, right? You know, Val asked me the question, right? Like, it was shortly before we started doing this, and she said something about sealers. And then I think the answer I gave her was, I didn't want to talk about sealers. I think, is that no, what you said? No, that's not what that's you said. Not, you not said what I said. could talk about them all day long. I could talk about sealers all day long, Vicky. So let's get right, so settle in, because here Sorry, goes. Get so, comfortable. Here get it comes. Comfortable. Well, I'll give you a pause if you want to go get some a snack or something and then come back. Um, so I teach um, I, I teach some mosaic classes here. I've said that a couple of times. But one of the, the uh, particular class that I do teach is an architectural mosaic class. And so that's one reason why I'm really picky about the grout, you know, how you mix it correctly, right? Because we want it to be durable and last a long time. And so... Um, I, you know, I talk about a lot of different applications where maybe you're mosaicing something outdoors or a floor, a shower wall, backsplash, right? Those are the types of things that I cover in a class. And um, so sealer seems like a, a natural question, right? I mean, you know, I'm doing this and should I put a sealer on this? And um, I'll give you, I'll try to give you the quicker version of the story, but I, 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 I dang it. <laughs> so I, I called the, um, I, I called the company that we were buying grout from at the time and, and said, Hey, uh, you know, we would, Delphi would like to sell a sealer. We think it'd be a great idea to have a grout sealer to offer to our customers. And the person I spoke to on the phone said, well, uh, what, what kind of sealer do you want? And I said, well, 
a, you know, one that seals the grout. And what, I thought it was a trick question, right? I go, and then she said, well, well, what do you want it for? It, I, I, I was like, well, to, to seal it, right? I, I was confused. I didn't know why she was asking me. And then she said, no, really. She goes, really, what do you, what do you think the sealer is going to do? And I said, well, I think it's going to protect the grout. Will it make it more durable, um, right? Last longer, uh, keep stains off it, exactly. all that sort of keep stuff, right? Of that, that's glass. what I said to her. And then what she, the, what she told me was, well, I don't have anything for you. And I was like, what? And um, she said, let me tell you what grout sealers do. So grout sealers, so the grout is already waterproof, right? So a, a sealer doesn't make it any more waterproof. So that's one thing it doesn't do. Um, she said that grout sealers are temporary stain preventers. And she said temporary is in two different ways. One way is, um, let's say we sealed this, right, with a, with a sealer, and you do use it, so you wipe it off and you clean it every so often while you're wearing off the sealer. Right, it's the same thing if you sealed your floor, you know, the, the grout on your floor, tiled floors, same deal, you're walking on it, right? You're wearing the sealer off. Uh, you're sh supposed to reapply sealers once a year, which probably nobody on this planet does that, right? So that's what she meant by temporary. But she also meant temporary this way, which I found really interesting. So let's pretend that we sealed this one. So I got this nice white grout on here, and I had a, a grape of, of a glass of grape juice that I set on here, right? And um, I wasn't around, and the cat jumps up and knocks the juice over, right? Well, if I'm there, I can clean the juice up, and it won't stain the grout. But if you're not there, the, the grape juice will eventually seep through the sealer and then stain the grout. That's what she also means by temporary. So I was, like, totally surprised by that. I was like, and so I can tell you that uh, it's been a personal thing of mine to try to find, like, the perfect sealer, to find if there really is something. And, and I've tried, I can't even tell you how many, a dozen, mm -hmm. I bet, different sealers and they and she's she's not kidding i mean they all work pretty much the same none of them make the grout more durable so usually my advice is if you're doing something that's functional and you're using a light colored grout i mean if this was black grout and i was going to use it i probably wouldn't care right i mean how, how are you going to stain the black grout right i mean i doubt you're going to do anything to the grout to make it look blacker right so um so again my advice would be if you're using light colored grout on a functional object then I would seal it, but just be prepared to, you know, seal it more than once, right? So hopefully that was it. That wasn't too bad. I didn't rant too long, did I? No. It was a little fine. too long. It was that's starting fine. to. We're starting to fine. lose people there. No, um, no, no. But you, yeah, it doesn't hurt anything to use it. Yeah. It's just not no. going to be. It just no. might not be the the, the end really all want. that people yeah. think it really is, or or even. As, ne as necessary as people think it might be. That's what I think it is. I, th yeah. I think it's, it's not as necessary as people think, I think is what it is. Now, if you, I don't know if anyone has done that before, if you've ever sealed a, a mosaic, but I can tell you most sealers do not look good on the surface of the glass. You know, when they dry, they look like a, a gummy, hazy film and, and they kind of take away some of the nice shiny look, you know, that's to the glass. And so usually with sealers, you have to clean off the glass after you've applied the sealer, which again, you can imagine doing a mosaic with all these hundreds of little tiny pieces and now you have to go back in and try to clean the glass off. It's, yeah. it can be a challenge. So yeah. there you go. Good. Good. All right, let's let that thing dry. Oh, question um, from Sharon. All right, Sharon. too much sealant stained the grout? That seems to have happened on my penny oh. round in the shower floor. Yeah, there, yeah. so there's different types of sealers, and, and so some of them will discolor the um, will discolor the grout. They just will. Naturally, when you put them on, they usually make them a little darker. Um, sometimes they will, you know, they could change it a, a little bit, but that's, that's not all that surprising. And, uh, yeah, the interesting thing is a lot of times on the sealer, it doesn't always tell you that. I mean, you don't, you don't get that information like, oh, this is going to make your grout look a little different. But, um, but they do. Some of them do. Usually it's the silicone ones. So I guess if you're reading the ingredients on them, the silicone sealers, uh, a lot of times will discolor the grout slightly. But, is there you anything know. you can clean it that you know of? No, I mean, you could try to take the sealer off, I guess. But I don't know how easy that is. Right. But, Yeah. Um, so, oh, so we have another uh, mosaic piece here. While that one's drying, we're, we're going to talk about just one other thing, I think, real quick while we're giving that a little more time. So this is a project. This I think it used to be a table that we sold. Um, we used to sell these uh, tables, and now we just have it in our one of our classrooms, and it was uh, up on the on top of a cabinet, you know, leaning against the wall, and it fell off. And all, like I, I can tell you, a bunch of these pieces all just popped off, and so a lot of the big pieces did. And uh, at first I thought they all broke, but they really didn't. Only the moon broke, so I recut it. But 
it kind of reminded me of doing a repair work because I've done repair works mm -hmm. on mosaics before and it was really, really pretty similar. So I just glued the pieces all back on, but I don't know if you could tell by the, the tell image. It's some of that you can really see. Yeah, it's really hard to tell, but there's, there's no grout no in here, in here and there's no grout up in, in some of these places. So we're going to regrout this one. And I was, um, you know, I mentioned earlier that a lot of times when I'm doing a project, especially if it's a big one, I don't necessarily grout the whole thing. And the main reason why I don't is because I often don't have time to clean it up. It's not that I don't have time to mix and apply grout. I, I usually have time for that, but it's the cleaning part that you have to always be concerned about. So a lot of times, even in this table, I might not grout the whole thing. I might grout, you know, a quarter of it, a third of it, you know, clean it off and then grout the next one, clean it. Um, but the issue is whenever we're going to add new grout to old grout, that's, that's where you can run into problems. And this grout I know is real old. So we're going to um, do a couple of things to it. So I grabbed, you know, we got a few sponges here. This is one of the sponges that um, comes in the Delphi kit. And it's a nylon sponge. These are actually pretty nice, right? So they, they hold a, a lot of water. Uh, one of these is a cellulo sponge, uh, not something that, without, that we sell here at Delphi, but this one also works pretty well. Um, we have these ones that have the scrubby pad on this side, which I'm not a big fan of the scrubby pad. So um, when you're using sponges, I would try to avoid this side. Oh, <laughs> dang it. Uh, only because sometimes the little, these things break down and they'll get in the grout. So I did a white one one time and had these little, when I got done, I had this little, little green, green stuff in it. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but other than that, so we need some water. And then I think I'm just going to use this sponge. And then, oh, we got to mix up some. You want to. What? You want to mix up some black grout, or you want me to just do it? I don't care. In, in there? Now we're gonna mix it in there. So just here, use one of these. I don't care which one you use. And then, um, oh, so the other thing too is one reason why I like get these inexpensive things is they quickly become color coded, right? I mean, you can see this is the one I only use for when I'm mixing black grout. This used to be white, um, but it turned black just because it got stained, right? So uh, obviously, I wouldn't use this now to mix white grout because then I'm gonna have gray. So. You don't have to do a bunch. Well, I don't. I'm not gonna. I don't You're need to do, do the whole thing now. Okay. We'll just gonna do a little bit. And, um, like that. I'm yeah, that looks good. That'll sure. be good. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do another. Okay. Go for it. Okay. Now I'm gonna be very. Careful I don't know. Water. Yeah, just a tiny bit. Oh shoot. Mm. That's way too much. Mm -hmm. I might pull yeah. it out. You could if you had something to pour it into. Can I, I mean, give me that white bucket. The this, white. This no, one. No, this one. That one? Oh, sure. Yes, pour it in there. Yeah, we don't care. That's, I guess you're right. That's the other thing you do is pour off some of that water. Oh, shoot. This is good. There you go. That's good. Okay. Now we'll see where we are. Still too much. But not as bad. Yeah. It is still a tiny bit too much, but mm -hmm. not too bad. Okay. Tip it toward the camera. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, right. That's not bad, but it's a little wet. A little wet. Just add, yeah, just add, add a little more a little dry, sprinkle. just a tiny bit. See, like you were talking though, but see. Yeah, that's stays. not bad. And then if I do that, it plops off. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, you know, I my my rule is two or three times you shake it, and then it plops off. So if it comes off after one. Probably, and, and this is just a tiny bit too wet. I mean, not, not really too bad. And again, for what we're doing, it's probably not that big of a deal. Well, so you don't need to add a ton. So, But let's see if you can get a little bit more. So while um, Val's doing that, let me tell you what I'm doing over here. So I got my sponge in here. I'm getting it really, really wet. So here's the key when you're trying to um, add new grout where there's old grout. So the issue is when you add new grout, so it's wet, right? And the old grout's dry. So the old grout will start to suck some of the water out of the new grout. And so where the two grouts meet up, you often get this discoloration because the water is leaving into the old grout. And you also get a, a weak spot there because again, the, the grout, the wet grout that needs that water is losing the water. So I have a real simple little trick. All I do is dampen I dampen the old grout, so uh, I just get a sponge, got it full with a bunch of water. I don't know exactly where we're going to go, but let me uh, get a bunch of it wet. So I dampen the old grout, right? Get it wet, let, give it a second or two to absorb some of that water. So the fact that, that Val, you know, the grout might be a little little wet is actually okay. I'm, I'm fine with that because uh, I know that some of it wants to kind of, um, I'm just picking up some of the excess. This one is maybe not... There's a little too much water now on the surface, so I got a paper towel. I'm just gonna get some of that water off. But so I'm just dampening so the old grout. So you used a sponge to do that. You yeah. wouldn't use your spray bottle. 
No. <laughs> oh, I guess you could, but I, I feel like I have more control with a sponge, okay. but no, it's whatever. Probably soaks yeah. it a little better, right? Maybe. Whatever. Yeah, I think so, but you are you going? You should do it. You should do it. Why well, you could do? I don't know. Okay. I mean, I could do it if you want me to. But... Right. We're just gonna come in here. There was a spot there. There's a spot here. I know it's hard. Black is always the tricky one because it, once you start smearing around, everything looks black. Yeah, you, you can't you see You can't it. see, did I, did I fill it? in that one or didn't I fill in that one? So, um, but I'm not sure. I'm just going on top of some of those other ones. I know sometimes people will, like in this situation, might have been a good um, use of a um, Ziploc bag. So sometimes people will take a Ziploc bag, put the grout in the Ziploc bag, cut the corner off it, and then use it like a piping bag like they, you know, do in the baking world, right? Or cake decorating. And then, in fact, they even sell, um, well, they're big, big grout bags, but they're way too big for all we're doing. You know, if you're trying to be a little more delicate about where you're putting, I mean, I don't really need to smear grout like all over, right? I could have been a little more uh, careful about where that application's at, but we're in a hurry. I don't know. I wanted to get this end right here. Well, we're not going to be able to wait for that one. To yeah, we're not going to clean this one off. So I mean, we're, we're not going to. Well, I mean, we are we going to will, clean, but not on camera. <laughs> but not on camera because we don't have time to let you know let that one dry. So, um, I just and I'm not going to do the whole thing. I just wanted to do a, um, a little bit of it. So, but hopefully, you guys get the idea about that, right? So, give you guys all the little tricks. Something happens, she actually can fix it later. Yeah, you know it, it's surprising that. Um, well, since I'm cleaning this, let me. I'll tell you the uh, grout story, right? Talk to this company that that we're, that we were buying grout from, and I was asking them the questions about. Uh, we had a customer, and they they were like, "Well, my grout's cracking," and uh, I'm. They they thought there was something that bad wrong with the grout, right? They were blaming the grout, and so. They were like, well, can you call the manufacturer? And maybe there's just a bad batch of grout. So I called the manufacturer, and I'm talking to them, and I get on the phone, and I said, hey, you know, I got a customer, and they're complaining because their grout's cracking. And then the guy says, what's the problem? And I said, well, the grout's cracking, which to me I thought was a problem. He didn't see that as a problem. And then he just says, oh, yeah, that's what grout does. So, you know, he said, and he said, well, just tell her to patch it. So, again, you know, the, what I like to tell people is, that, you know, the grouts we're using are coming from the tile industry. And so the, the way that they think is that if something's going to go wrong with what you tiled, right, you don't want the tiles cracking. You'd rather have all the grout lines crack, right, because it'd be a lot easier to fix, you know, grout lines than it is to fix tile. So the grout is actually made to, um, you know, to give a little bit. It's, that's why it's not as durable or as strong as concrete is. It's not that strong because of that reason. So, again... So think of this as a project you did and, and the grout cracked or some fell out because maybe you didn't mix it right or whatever, right? So this is how you would fix that too. That'd be a quick way to do that. Karen's got a question. If yeah. you're using multiple colors of grout, do you let them dry in between? Oh, Sharon, that is a great question. Yeah, so so it depends, right? It depends on what you want the look to, to be. Let's pretend I was doing the, I wanted to do the tree and use green grout, right? So if I did um, this wet and then did the green, green grout here wet, where the two wet grouts meet up, they bleed into each other slightly, and you get this soft transition between the two colors, which sometimes is really mm -hmm. kind of nice. nice. But if you want something a uh, um, little more distinct than that, then you would grout all the white, clean it off, let it dry, which is at least overnight, and then do the green. And then that way, when they butt up, there'll be a real crisp line between the you know the two grouts. So that was a good one. Yeah. That was a great one. one. Thanks, Sharon, because <clears throat> I wasn't going to offer up that that bit of information, but. Uh, so okay, let's, yeah, well, off? let's try it, right? So the question is, so, um, yeah, it's just been plenty of time. Um, it doesn't look as shiny, especially by the tree. Yeah, or it doesn't, right? So the, so the question is, is it ready to clean up? And there's a few ways of cleaning off grout. I can tell you that, you know, the traditional way of cleaning off grout is actually what I have sort of set up here, right? I have a sponge. Uh, you put water in it. You, you wring out as much water as you can wring out, all right, so that it's just damp. And then you come in and you clean the grout off. So you can see what I'm doing here. And I can tell you that's pretty common, right? This is usually what happens. It looks like that. Um, I don't always do this this uh, really, really uh, wet, damp technique because it involves you having to keep rinsing the sponge out, going back. And you can see I am just smearing grout around. So sometimes I will use a technique where I'm, I'm just going to use a paper towel. And uh, I'm going to come in 
and just start trying to clean it off. Not wet, right? So this is dry paper towel. Yep, this is a dry paper towel. And so what this does is a couple of things. One is it's going to help level the grout off the surface, but it, hopefully it won't remove a lot of grout. When you're using something damp like the sponge, oh, I just dripped water on there. When you're using something damp like a sponge, you get the grout wet and you start recessing grout lines. Now, again, this goes back to the thing that we've said a few times is, you know, is it functional or is it just, you know, decorative? If it's decorative, it's not going to make a difference if the grout lines are slightly recessed, right? But if this is, again, a functioning, you know, uh, think of it as a tabletop or, or even a tray, you probably don't want the grout too recessed because then you run the risk of uh, leaving places for it to get dirty or um, exposing sharp edges of glass, which I think is probably the bigger issue. So my goal is always try to keep the grout as flush to the surface of the glass as I can. And so if we work with something slightly dry and not wet, and this is not bad. This is, it's a little wet. Um, meaning we could have let this dry maybe another 10 minutes or so. I mean, nothing too dramatic. Mm -hmm. But I'm actually not doing a bad job. If you can see what's going on here, uh, this looks pretty nice. Uh, I am smearing a little grout around, but that's okay. Um, I would expect that. Um, we can come in and do this. So there's really two cleanups here that we're going to do. And this one is the first one, which is the, the critical one. Uh, as I mentioned before, we don't want to wait too long, right? A uh, couple hours would be too long. You wouldn't be able to do this. If you, the, the point is that like, if we waited longer than two hours, then you're definitely going with something wet, and then you really run the risk of, like I said, of, of recessing grout lines or, or scrubbing really hard because you got to get the grout off the surface of the glass. Um, uh, we're going to come in here and get the corners. Corners are a little trickier. So there's really two cleanups to grouting. This is the first one. This is the critical one. If you look at, especially you can see it on the on the M maybe, you know, there's a little bit of grout on there, right? It's a little smeary white grout, and I'm totally fine with that. If you spend all your time trying to clean that off, you're probably going to be rubbing too hard. Let it dry. So once we do that first initial clean uh, here, we're going to let this dry, and then we're going to come back with something damp. And there you can use your damp sponge, um, but I wait. Uh, sometimes I wait overnight, in fact. Because I really want the grout to really set up, and I don't want to run the risk of removing any grout. So, because uh, all you're going to do at that point is the same thing here. You can see it definitely on the tree, right? I mean, if we let this dry a little bit longer, when we come in uh, with something damp, all we're going to do, as you can see, is just clean off. We're going to clean off the glass, and it's going to look it's going to look pretty nice, right? So, instead of uh, right now it's just too wet and so all I'm doing is just smearing it around smearing it around but I think you kind of get the idea you can see yeah. like that compared to what's on the tree over there right mm -hmm. does that show up oh yeah yeah so that's it so you don't have to worry about that extra time then like if you said you the second your second cleaning you can just wait overnight yeah that's a really it's nice thing one yeah. initial one you have to get in there within that timeline yeah that's the critical one in fact I, the second cleanup I've done you know because a lot of times I'll I'll do something similar to this for classes and when I'm doing a demonstration on grouting. And a lot of times, I mean, I won't do the second cleanup. I've done it like a month later even, you know, and, and it cleans off just fine because that little bit of grout on the surface of the glass is not going to stick there. You know, what we're concerned about is big globs of grout on the surface. We don't, we don't want that, so. Pamela wants to know if we sell that tree. Oh, I, we were afraid uh, somebody might ask us. We currently do not sell that tree, but... Um, maybe here in the future? Yeah, anything's possible, maybe. right? So... Well, I don't know what we else. We have our laser, uh, laser water jet. Yeah, our water jet. Yeah, it's called a Wazer is the machine, and uh, it, that's going to be available, so you could buy one, right? So <laughs> <laughs> Put that on your Christmas. Put that on a, yeah, that would be a nice little Christmas gift. So I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but the grout that we're using, even though it says Jennifer's Mosaics on it, which makes it sound like it's you know something for the craft industry, it really is made for the tile industry, and it is um, rated for use in swimming pools. So it is waterproof. Right. I mean, as I mentioned earlier, most grouts are waterproof. And so there's nothing you can really do to make them more waterproof. So um, uh, generally, you know, the surface of this is usually pretty good when you get done. Right. The glass is waterproof. The grout's waterproof. So. Mm -hmm. So and then we talked about sealers earlier. So I guess we don't need to. We're not going to revisit that. Not That's going to be. <laughs> nobody no. wants that. I, I hear a pe couple of people in the background. Don't do that. Don't. <laughs> So, I don't know, I think I don't, was that it? Was that I think it? So. I think we got everything. But again, if a, you know, if a question pops up later, just reach out to us. Um, you know, lots of places. We'll be back <laughs> in December. Is that when we're coming back? Yes. Yeah, we'll we're be back. A little break for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Do we have a topic yet? 
We do. We're going to do we stained do. glass projects with pre-cut. Oh, yeah. We're going to do some pre-cut oh, um, project glass. stuff. Yeah, because, you yeah. know, just some last-minute gifts or something, right? So hopefully that, um, in case you're like me and you wait till last minute to make your stained glass projects, right? So yeah. so boiling and soldering. and Yeah, double, we're going to be boiling and soldering. Yeah, okay, so. yeah. Cool. So, All right. It'll be good. We'll see yeah. you guys in early yeah. December.